Hey YouTube, in this boat ramp review I am going to visit the Carbrook boat ramp on the Logan River. Now, the ramp's located at Carbrook and you just turn off the Beanley Redland Bay Road onto Ferry Road and that's Ferry like the boat, not the little people with wings and the boat ramp's at the end of Ferry Road. It's actually at the end of a small road off Ferry Road which is unnamed. But once you're there you can't miss it. Now if you need petrol on the way, I'm only familiar with the bit of Bingley Redland Bay Road between the M1 and Ferry Road. So I can point out that there's three garages there available to stop and get your petrol. If you're coming from the other direction, you'll have to do your own research on that. You'll be approaching the ramp down this road, and the body of water on the right is the Logan River. The other body of water on the left is a recreational ski park. You should see the ski park on your way down Ferry Road. Now the Carbrook ramp is a private ramp and you have to pay to use it and the arrow here points to the office where you pay. If you come down and the office isn't open, if you want to go out really early or really late when the office is unattended, you can leave your fee in an envelope with your car registration written on it in a locked box just beside the office door. At the time I'm making this video the fee is $10. Now I always pull over on the left hand side in one of those two areas marked with the yellow line to prep my boat and go and pay the ramp fee. But if you go down there and it's really busy, there's another option of pulling over to the area on the right hand side marked with the yellow line, or you can go up to the parking area and prep your boat up there. There's plenty of room, I've never seen it full yet, but then again I try not to use it on weekends either. Now it's a two lane ramp there, if it's a very low tide, stay on the side of the ramp nearest the office because the other side tends to be a little bit shallow out at the end of the mangroves I'm told. But if the tide's not low, you can use both sides of the ramp, no problem. There's no beach there to put the boat on when you get it off the trailer, so if the ramp's busy, there's a couple of pontoons, you can take the boat out there, tie it off, and then come back and move your car. Or if the ramp's not too busy and you've got someone with you, get them to hold the boat just off the cement of the ramp while you go and park the car. Now we've got the parking area marked with three yellow lines there. There's no actual markings for parking your car and trailer, but as with every ramp, the parking is nose-in angle. There's a lot of land there, there may be other areas that can be used for parking, but they're the only three areas I've ever seen in use, and I've never seen them full yet, so you shouldn't have a problem with parking. There's a mooring area around the ramp, there's a lot of boats moored there, so make sure that you observe the six knot speed limit when you're departing from the ramp, And the same when you're coming back in, slow down before you reach the mooring area. Coming up to the pontoon, slow is better. You see some guys that race up to the pontoon and hit reverse and it looks very showy and if they get it right, it looks pretty impressive. Oh gee, they can drive well. But then you see the guy that gets it wrong, rams into the pontoon and cracks the side of his boat. I've seen that happen. Sort of takes the shine off the exercise, so nice and steady does it. You should just kiss up to the pontoon with barely any motion at all. I like to stop about an inch away from the pontoon if I can. You know, anything within reach is fine, like six inches is fine. But I like to just try and stop the boat just off the pontoon so I can reach over, put the rope on and just walk the boat in. And just to reiterate, there are two pontoons. I've always used the smaller one because it's never been that busy that the smaller one's been full. So I just go to the closest one to the ramp. But if you do strike a busy time, the large pontoon is available there if you need to use it. Now as on arrival, there's the three parking areas available to pull over and prepare your boat for the road again. And if necessary, you can go up to the car park if that's not full. There's also another area just off to the right of the ramp, which isn't really a parking area, but it's uh, an area where you can do a turning circle. You can stop there and prepare your boat for the road, I've seen people do that. And most importantly of all, there's toilet facilities there if you need to go before departure, or more likely, upon return. And that brings us to where would I be going if I had launched from the Carbrook Ramp. Now obviously if I was going to fish the Logan River, then the Carbrook Ramp would be a contender. That's the ramp I was going to launch from. Going beyond the river mouth, that depends a lot on what I'm going to do. You have the Redland Bay Ramp to the north and the Seglitz Ramp to the south. 
if I'm going to drop crab pots in the Logan River and then go out beyond the mouth, I would launch with carpet. Having said that, I've discovered that it's not a good idea to leave pots unattended in the Logan River. I see people do leave pots unattended in the river, but the one time that I left them there unattended, I came back to find that they'd been raided, and there was only one large female and one small male in one pot. A couple of the others had even been left open after they'd been raided. So anyway, yeah, it's a good ramp. Use it if you're going to Logan. Use it if you're going maybe a little bit outside the mouth of the Logan. And then if you're going much further north of the mouth or south of the mouth, I would consider the Redland Bay or Steglitz ramps instead. I'll just mention one other reason why you might want to use the carpet ramp going further than the Logan River, and that is the peace of mind that it provides by having a reasonably secure area to leave your car if you're planning to go out overnight. Yeah, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it's given you a bit of an insight into using the carburet ramp and that you give it a go one day. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you can go to my YouTube channel or follow me on Facebook. There's a link to each Facebook page down in the description below. Until next time, good fishing.